Ladies and gentlemen, the IGN article with Vince Sampella released roughly one week ago, giving a bird's eye view of what the new Battlefield is supposed to look like and what the studios involved are going to be focused on. Now, as a long time Battlefield fan, I really, really want to be excited for this game because Battlefield as a series desperately needs it as well as its fan base. But, ah, uh, man, I just don't know if I can be. Alright, so by now most of you have probably already seen this article. Uh, like I said, it's been out for roughly a week, so I'm not going to go through every single line of the article. There's some good breakdown videos of that that do go through it line by line, but I'm going to kind of point out some things and just give my opinion on what's going on and what I'm taking from this article. What I like about it, what gets me excited, but then also just what makes me feel like, uh, I mean, what makes this any different than everything we've heard before from these, from these big developers? So, I mean, right off off the bat, you know, Battlefield goes back to basics. Okay, great. You know, Zampella says, if you look back at the peak uh, pinnacle of Battlefield, it's Battlefield 3 and 4. Yeah, uh, everyone knows that. Uh, the community has been screaming that at the top of their lungs for years. Uh, what was it? Battlefield uh, 3, 4, and then, I don't know, maybe Hardline or something came after that. I can't remember. And then we divvied off into this, you know, again, pre-modern era that quite frankly or at least in my opinion no one cares about playing world war ii uh, vietnam korean war gulf war whatever those games you got to understand that especially the generation that's coming into the gaming scene now they don't even know what the hell those wars are you know i don't know if those wars are still being taught in school or, or whatever and i'm not trying to discredit the history of those wars uh, or or you know anyone who fought in those wars are veterans but but in terms of gaming and creating a game, a consumer product, especially one that's coming out of a AAA studio, a host of AAA studios in this case, no one cares about playing those types of games. If you want to play that type of game, there are incredible indie games that, that, that'll satisfy that for you, hell let loose. I mean, look into it elsewhere. But when it comes to a multi-million dollar studio producing a, a, a AAA banger game that is is one of the highest quality, highest level of quality produced games alongside Call of Duty and other AAA shooters, nobody wants to be playing in fucking World War II. We're so far past that now. So anyway, yes, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 were the era where everything was monitored uh, modern. We have to get back to the core of Battlefield and do that amazingly well. Yeah, you definitely do. The only problem is, is that that's exactly what was said when, bat when Battlefield 2042 was being discussed. What did they say about getting back to the core of Battlefield when they were developing Battlefield 2042? They said it was going to be a love letter to fans, right? They said it was going to be, those were the words they used. Now, I, I believe they were specific specifically referencing the portal mode, which <laughs> was literally all they would have had to have done was just make the whole game the portal mode because they put all of Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4's content in the portal mode where everybody ended up playing anyway. So this right here, is one of those kind of Captain Obvious moments. And I'm not saying this, you know, about Vince or anything, because Vince is just now back on the team. You know, he hasn't been involved. Uh, but he was involved in the original Battlefields that did so well. Uh, I believe 3 and 4 specifically. But yeah, the core of Battlefield is what we have to do amazingly well. Yeah, it's, again, just like everyone's been saying this for years. You released Battlefield 5, Battlefield 1, you know, 24. 42, which was just such a bizarre game for Battlefield. I don't know. It just seems so obvious. And this right here, statements like this, this make me feel a little shifty about it because that's exactly what was said about Battlefield 2042, that it was going to be a love letter to fans. Now for this one, I'm not gonna touch on it too much because this to me is rather insignificant. I understand why they don't wanna do it for Battlefield and if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. The 128 player servers, yeah, it didn't it didn't work for standard conquest and rush and all that. Okay, cool, so drop it back down to 64, 32 v 32. I, I don't think this is really like a make or break for the game. If Battlefield is to release a battle royale mode, which again, everyone was screaming for for a long time and you say what you will about Battlefield, 
battle royale, man. The, the fact of it is, extraction shooters and battle royales are what provide longevity to multiplayer games in 2024 going into 2025 and beyond. They just are. The spawn die gameplay loop where there's literally nothing else but spawning, killing, dying, that just doesn't cut it anymore. So I know there's going to be a lot of people out there saying Battlefield doesn't need a battle royale, man. It doesn't need it. Never has. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a, a plenty of fun to be had in the Conquest, Rush, Capture the Flag, whatever game modes. But people have been screaming for a Battlefield battle royale for a long time. So I think the 128 player servers could work, but they're going to have to work in a game mode like that. They're going to have to work in a game mode that's a Battlefield sort of spinoff, if you will, uh, where they're doing 128 players in a battle royale mode or in an extraction mode. So obviously, you know, his statement was he'd rather have uh, really nice, dense, well-designed spaces. I agree. One of my favorite parts about Battlefield 3, I believe it was, it could have been 4, I don't remember. Uh, both of them were bangers. Was the close quarters maps, the playlist that was specifically uh, close quarters. Uh, some of the most fun multiplayer, you know, I've, I've had uh, in Battlefield or multiplayer shooters uh, at all. Don't get me wrong. The multiplayer in Battlefield is fantastic. Um, so, you know, I get it. Take out the 128 player multiplayer servers. Let's get back to 64. That works better. It's more stable, whatever. The infrastructure is easier to handle. Uh, this right here, though, uh, he's careful to stress that Battlefield 2042 wasn't a failure of a game despite not doing as well as he or as the studio hoped. Uh, they spent a lot of time learning, tried something new. It didn't work. Uh, I mean, that's a nice professional corporate way of saying that it was a flop because realistically it was a flop. Uh, the game was released in a pretty rough condition. Uh, it, it didn't even get to what people considered, you know, a game that even had a battlefield identity until, <laughs> I mean, right before they decided they weren't going to support the game anymore because they were starting the next game, you know, so they just chalked it. But I mean, realistically, it, 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 it by all for all intent and purpose, it was a failure of a game. I mean, if we're talking about the series that is Battlefield, it was a failure of a game. It was very poorly received. No one liked the way that it released, the direction that it took. I, you know, yeah, okay, cool. They tried something new, but I've said it before in other videos, and I'll say it again. I'm all for creators, especially the devs, the artists, the environment artists, the texturing people, the programmers, having freedom and flexibility to do what they want to do in the game they're creating. But when you are part of a conglomerate, that's as big as these guys are same with call of duty uh you <laughs> I mean, if you want to be successful, man, just give the people what they want, what they're asking for. If you want to spin off and have a subsidiary, subsidiary studio and do something under your own guise and vision without that sort of overarching corporate agenda that you have to fulfill, then do that. But don't take the Battlefield uh, IP and do that because Battlefield 2042, in terms of Battlefield, was a failure of a game. I mean, it was. You know, it wasn't all bad. I played it. It was okay. But it doesn't definitely wasn't, you know, what Battlefield 3 and 4 was. So moving on along in the rant and the ramble, uh, this part I'm not really concerned about, the road ahead for Battlefield, them basically just talking about it being a competitor with Call of Duty because Battlefield and Call of Duty have always been the neck and neck competitors in the first person shooter space. I don't really give a shit. I, I, I think Call of Duty, <laughs> I, I don't even know what Call of Duty is now. I, I, I don't play it. I don't have it installed. I've, I've installed and uninstalled that game countless times. Call of Duty, Duty is is just I, I don't know what the hell Call of Duty is. I'm not worried about Battlefield competing with Call of Duty. I want Battlefield to execute. And at the end of the end of the video, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more because that's what a lot of these studios and a lot of gamers, you know, especially in the early access uh, space, which is what my last video was about, do not understand. We are not worried about the potential that your game has. We're not concerned about the vision that your game has, and we're we're not worried about it competing or killing another game. What we want and need is execution 
execution. So this particular part of it, I, I don't really care. I mean, it's going to compete with Call of Duty, obviously, because they're in the same exact space competing for mostly the same people, even though I think that Battlefield players are largely uh, more my demographic, a little bit older, a little bit more hardcore. Call of Duty seems to be a mix of just Gen X and Gen Z nonsense at this point with insanely fast, ridiculous mechanics that only people who seem to dedicate their life to figuring out are any good at. Uh, but that is also just me bitching because I suck at the game. Uh, play testing. I think we're in a really good place. Is it challenging? Of course. Uh, it wouldn't be fun if it wasn't. Uh, they're going to announce next year around more getting more community in uh, the core of what we do, getting the community back on our side, get that trust back. That's what they need to do. They think we're in a really good place. Yep, they obviously do. Again, though, that's going to come from execution. It's not going to come from meetings. It's not going to come from uh, company events, uh, you know, d prizes and giveaways and spots. That's not going to come from any of that. Okay. It's not. What's going to, what's going to get the community back on your side. What's going to get battlefield back is execution. And that's not just battlefield. That's everything, man. They've got four studios, dice, motive, ripple effect, and criterion. That's big. I think ripple effect used to be uh, a part of respawn. And then they, they branched off and did their own thing. I think Vince Sampella heads up ripple effect. Uh, he's probably still affiliated with dice somehow though. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you know, all of this is great, man. You know, these articles and things like this, but this is exactly how call of duty modern warfare three was. This is exactly how that game was, you know, with the call of duty next event for modern warfare three. I mean, just unbelievable amounts of money spent on marketing, unbelievable. And battlefield always has awesome trailers, man. Super dope theatrical trailers. You know, I mean, that's not the problem. You know, the problem isn't getting the game hyped up. It's not getting people to want the game. We want the game, man. We've been wanting the game. We have been wanting the game. We have. We've been telling you what we wanted out of the game. So that's not the issue, man. Okay, and you can go down here to the comments of the article and read the, through the comments, man. But you can read through most of these comments, man. People are not buying it. And we shouldn't be buying it. We shouldn't be buying into this kind of crap anymore. And it's the same thing with early access games, which again, I talked about in my other video. I'll throw that up uh, in this video for you to click through. Why vision and potential kills games? Because vision and potential are not what make great games. And that's how I'll round the video off. Vision and potential are great things to have on paper, in your mind, in your heart, up on the whiteboard in the studio for everyone to come in and see every single day and get behind and get excited about and talk about. That's great, man. Anything worth doing starts with vision and potential, starts with a why, but it does not matter if you can't execute it, man, okay? It just doesn't matter. You can have all the want in the world to get off your ass and get in shape, but if you don't get up and go do it, you're not going to get in shape. You're not gonna lose weight, you know? Simple, very dumb example, but these studios are so big and they have so much money and they answer to so many people who quite frankly probably have no affiliation with gaming at all other than they're the COO or the CFO or the CEO of the company that they just do not deliver an executed vision piece of potential that people want you know I mean, at the very end of the article here, we're talking about how it might come to the Nintendo Switch too. I mean, whoop the fucking do, man. You know, fantastic. Battlefield, the next big Battlefield scheduled to release at the end of 2025 might be on the Switch too. That should be the least, absolute least of your concerns. And I know that that's not, you know, a primary portion of this article. Zempella was just asked about it. Obviously, there's going to be the PS5 Pro, next-gen Xbox is in the works, Nintendo might be having a Switch 2 come out. Yeah. But, you know, that's just goofy shit at the end of the article. The whole point of the video and the reason that I'm ranting and rambling in the video, it's not scripted, I don't have a script for this video, I didn't plan it out step by step, is because this is nothing. This is the same thing that we see year after year when it comes to big AAA games that everybody knows and everybody wants to play. Everybody wants them to be good. And we see this exact same type of thing happen every time. There's an interview about the game, 
where the game is going, why the last game wasn't received very well, what we need to do to change that. And and that's and it's so obvious, man. All they do, and again, I'm not taking a stab at Vince. He's just now coming back into the picture, and a lot of people believe in this guy because he was a part of the OG team. So I have hope and faith in that. But this is nothing. Potential and vision are nothing, okay? All we need to happen is execute on delivering a fully finished product that aligns with exactly what you're saying here in this article and every subsequent article and interview and early access release and playtest and on and on and on that we're going to get and the high fidelity 4k 10 million dollar game trailers just execute the game based on what you're saying here and what people want from the game now that's not to say that you can't take creative liberties and do things you know a certain way as artists and creators i think they're more than entitled to that it's their life it's their profession but when you're working with an ip that's this big you have to understand that there's a player base that wants something very specific so give it to them now when it comes to how battlefield may adapt itself as, as somewhere in this article i can't remember exactly where but somewhere in this article or at least somewhere else online They've talked about how uh, they're going to be expand. Oh, here we go, right here. Expanding out and getting more players into the universe to see what we can do. So if you want a different experience, you don't have to leave Battlefield. Well, that sounds kind of like what they did before with the Battlefield hub. You know, the the battle, whatever it was called, battle log or whatever, where you essentially could just open up an online dashboard of everything Battlefield view your soldier career progress and, and then all the titles were there and you could kind of jump back and forth between the titles and it's the same thing when you open up a battlefield game they've got all the titles there right so you know they're creating like their own little battlefield hub but also what this could mean is if you want a different experience so if you want to take some creative liberty for something that battlefield hasn't done before aka battle royale extraction type game mode you want a different experience in the battlefield universe well listen to people's feedback and what they like and don't like but considering it's battlefield and it'll be new for battlefield with battlefield systems and mechanics then take some creative freedom and liberties there build that with your community right you know have fun with that with your community but when it comes to the core battlefield the core know what they want you set it right here yourself give them that don't try to play with it and change it and all oh, we think they might like this and we're going to change up this system and the economy of this no do that in one of these different experiences whether it's a pte you know whatever it is but leave the core of battlefield what it has been Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 is what we're talking about. I would even say the Bad Company series was an amazing series. Uh, amazing time in Battlefield. Leave it alone, man. Give people what they want. Take this particular portion of your hub, just like you did with Portal, and build that out with your community. You, you tried it with Firestorm, so you know people are open to it. You know you can do it. You know you want to. People want it. Do that there. Anyway, we're going to be receiving a lot more information about this game as time passes. Of course, there's going to be a myriad of articles and videos and people will start getting their hands on early builds. I believe it's scheduled to release uh, the end of next year. I have no idea how long they've been working on it. Hopefully longer than one year. Um, I would have to imagine they've been working on it for at least two or three. I mean, come on, man. Like We cannot keep making the same mistakes here with these games. You know, we just can't they're not going to survive you know i mean that's literally what my entire last video was about so i'm not going to repeat all of that information here but we got to have execution man we have to and i love battlefield i've always loved battlefield i want to see battlefield do great i want a great battlefield game to play with multiple game modes and multiple experiences especially with a game like delta force coming into the equation that's presenting some pretty strong competition in terms of what Battlefield has always been known for. 
So, you know, they're going to have to step up to the plate, man. But anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys listening to the video and making it through the rant. If you did, let me know your opinions below on the state of Battlefield, what you think the next Battlefield needs to focus on, if you're worried about anything, etc., etc. And as always, guys, I'd love to have you as a part of the community. If you liked the video, it's totally free to like it. I do stream three days a week here and on Twitch links all over the video as well as this is the description of the YouTube channel. Drop me a follow, drop me a sub, but most importantly, let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you guys online.